Hello, hello. It's been a little bit since I've uploaded on here, and uh, I am now coming back with something I should have done about a year ago in the form of a QA. and uh, I believe I'd set everything up in mid last year because, uh, oh, what milestone was it? Like 150,000 subscribers, and uh, I just forgot to actually like send out the form and distribute it. I did a couple tests and everything, so... All that to say, the Q&A is done, and I got a lot of interesting questions. And not only am I doing one Q&A, I'm doing two Q&As, because on top of getting a ton of questions, they were pretty evenly split down the middle, with about half being about, like, uh, either myself or my channel, and the other half being about TF2 specifically. And I feel like there's a lot of interesting stuff that I want to go into with the TF2 specific ones, that I'll do that in its own video, probably. I might even do three, just depending on how many continue to come in. So I pulled about uh, 20 to 30 questions that I thought would be interesting to go into for each. Obviously, that's not all of them. I got like almost a thousand questions submitted, so there were some that had to be dropped just for the sake of time, but uh, these are all the questions either about myself or my channel that I wanted to answer. To start off, there were a few that I saw repeatedly, even though the wording differed between them a little bit. Uh, the, the concept of the question was about the same, so I combined those all into their own questions, and I'll answer those first. Out of those, by far the question that I was asked the most was whether I'm ever going to like leave TF2 or if I ever have plans to play other games on the channel? The answer is probably eventually, but I don't have immediate plans to do so. TF2, okay, so th this is also kind of the answer to a different question. TF2, I don't have great confidence in the long-term viability of the game, not just on YouTube, but as a game in general. I think it's going to be around for a while, like, don't get me wrong, I don't think we're about to witness the immediate death of TF2, but I think we are witnessing a slow decline that exactly one entity has the power to fix, and that entity being Valve is probably never going to do any anything meaningful, meaning that, I don't know, TF2 is probably not going to come back from the disrepair that it's in. A doomer take, I know, but I mean, I've played this game for 10 years and I've seen the decline for about seven of them. So again, I, I feel like at this point, you got to recognize a pattern and not hold out for a hero that's probably never coming. That being said, as far as it relates to my immediate situation, there aren't any games that I'm planning to add anytime soon. The only reason I think why I would add a non-TF2 game within the next couple years is uh, if there's just some game that I really got into and really had a lot to talk about to the point of me actually having good video ideas on. Half the reason I have so many good ideas with TF2 is just because I played the game for so long and I, I understand like what sort of topics aren't covered. There aren't any other games that even come close and uh, eventually maybe my content style will shift to uh, translating to other games a little bit better but right now I just I don't think that's like a near plan. In a similar vein I also got asked quite a bit uh, about the future video ideas and future plans that I have for the channel. Um, I don't want to spoil too many of my video ideas, I think especially just because I, I don't know for sure if I'm going to finish all of them, but the ones that I do know uh, are coming up relatively soon and I am planning on finishing are, um, I, I made an escape room in a similar style to my, uh, my troll map, except this one's actually good. I've also been working on porting one of my older what if ideas to an actual game mode, and uh, that'll be tried out pretty soon. I won't spoil which one because I think it's uh, best left for a surprise, but um, there's that. Uh, I also was working on some of the hide and seek maps, so I have like out of the five we usually do, I have like three and a half of them done at this point, so that'll be fun. Those they may not be the next four videos that I upload, who knows what the schedule will end up being, but those are general ideas that I've had for the future that are pretty much confirmed. As far as more long-term stuff, I'm honestly not really sure like what sort of long-term plans I have for this channel. I know some people have a really thorough, grand five-year plan. I'm riding where the wind takes me, dude. I'm going to make videos that are fun for me in the moment and follow up on videos that I think uh, have different variations that I think would be interesting to test. And other than that, it's like, you know, I'm just going to throw stuff at the wall that I personally find fun or interesting, and we'll see what sticks and go from there. Is that eventually prone to running out of ideas? I mean, potentially. There have been slumps for sure, but uh, I think in general I've been able to keep that up relatively well over the past three years, so hopefully that will continue for at least three more, if not literally forever. I don't know. That might be way too lofty of a goal, but we'll see. And then the third question that I got pretty frequently on my channel is uh, whether X, Y, or Z series is being canceled and when I'm bringing it back. So I want to go through every single series that I'm still doing and which ones that I've canceled just to clear things up because I know I've been 
maybe not flaky is the right word, but I've not been very clear about uh, certain things that I've left halfway. Hide and seek is obviously still continuing. Uh, same with the what if videos and uh, like the map making stuff. Those, I mean, I've uploaded stuff on relatively recently, so I'm, it should be obvious that I'm still continuing those. Uh, fixing worst weapons is continuing. The reason I've not been very timely about the uploads is because uh, number one, casual just kind of sucks right now. Again, I think there's a question about this later, so I won't go too in depth about my thoughts about casual yet, but uh, it's just kind of a chore to play, so I've not really been interested in doing that. And number two, those videos just on average don't get that many views, and I understand like not everything is for views, but when it sucks to make and I'm guaranteed like a pretty low return, my motivation to do them is in the floor. That being said, I am still a little bit interested in the concept, and I do have ideas for Engineer and Pyro a lot right now, so I probably will do those within the next month or two, but uh, that series will eventually finish. I probably will just try to streamline the process of production a little bit more, and that way maybe I can finish them by the end of the year without having to uh, take huge sacrifices on my own accord. And then the final, not really a series, but style of video that I definitely am continuing are tier lists. They just take forever if I want to do them right. Uh, the RTD tier list probably took, what, like two years of off and on video production, but it was more so just like me playing Class Wars and getting the, uh, the experience and the footage as as well as a really weird and shaky production cycle, but it's like, it's going to be at least six months between those because I want to make sure I actually do have the knowledge necessary to make that in-depth of a tier list and uh, to talk about everything I want to. So those will continue. I've been debating about the next one being either uh, a medieval mode tier list because I feel like there's a lot more to talk about than what the existing ones have or a randomizer tier list, but I've not been able to find servers for that. So I'm kind of debating between those. The singular series that is on indefinite hiatus where I wouldn't be opposed to returning to it at some point in the future but similar to uh, fixing worst weapons it's like not very fruitful for me to actually work on is uh, designing fan-made weapons or designing randomly generated ones or whatever uh, those videos usually take me actually not that long they're usually pretty quick but uh, I've just found that not many people watch them so it's like you know while I have no problem returning to it in the future it's like I don't know if people just don't care why should I care either that's kind of my stance and then the series that will definitively not return, um, which probably should be obvious because I don't think I've even done videos on these in years, are number one, the TF2 times 10 tier list. I'm sorry to say for anyone that enjoyed those, they're not coming back. I may do a combined TF2 times 10 tier list in the same style as my newer ones, but the series is finished. There are a couple reasons. I think I've touched on this at some point before. Uh, the most notable one is that I just don't find TF2 times 10 very fun anymore. As it turns out, uh, explaining the meta in depth for a game mode that is very easily broken was not the best idea for the longevity of the mode. Uh, I think if it continued to receive balance updates from the creator, it would be fine. I think there are just certain things that are not in a great state right now, most notably heavy and pyro flamethrowers, and uh, probably what, kunai spies, they're just several things on all the classes that are just really not fun that you see all the time now. Um, that's the main reason, though, is just because it's like, it's impossible to try anything new, and it's like, the metrics that I'm comparing are, can it deal with the Huo long heater? No, nothing can? Okay, well, then this weapon's probably just effed here, because what's the point? But even if they did fix certain things, I probably wouldn't continue the series, just because, the, when was the last video that I made on this? I'm actually gonna find this. Uh, I believe it was 2021, I think. Yeah, it was uh, December 19th, 2021. So if you think that was uh, two years and some change ago, the amount of quality improvements that I've had in my videos since then, both in terms of like audio and visuals and just the way that I speak and stuff is immense. And I feel like if you're going through the playlist and you're watching the really old ones and then you're skipping to the brand new ones, it's going to be jarring. And I, I don't really stand and by the older videos much anymore. I mean, I think the information in them was fine, but at the same time, it's like, I wouldn't encourage anyone to go watch them because they're just old and uncomfortable and I don't like listening to them myself. Anyway, in terms of other series, uh, probably the Class Wars gameplays aren't going to continue, which should be obvious because like, the, those weren't even supposed to be a series. It was just me playing on the map. Weapon generators also aren't going to continue. I don't think there's any meaningful direction that I could realistically take that that hasn't already been done. I think they were fun while they lasted for like a year or so, but again, I, I 
I've milked everything I can out of them. Like, what new things could I talk about to make a, an interesting video that stands apart from the other ones? Probably not much. The Maps Without Invisible Walls series is also basically canceled, although I feel like that kind of evolved into Hide and Seek more so than just outright ending. I feel like Hide and Seek is the natural conclusion, where instead of just showing off what the maps are like and theorizing what they might be like, I actually invite friends on them and make a cool mini game out of it. I feel like that's a lot more interesting than just going through and saying like, oh, you can stand here now. That's neat. And then anything pre-2021 barely even registers as real in my eyes. So yeah. Okay. If anyone asks, my channel started in 2021. If you give a different answer, you're lying. So anyway, hopefully that gives you closure one way or another to whether a series you enjoyed is continuing. Sorry, I'm not continuing the TF2 times 10 tier list that I stopped doing over two years ago. I, I have a lot of people asking for those to come back. Oh, uh, the other thing that's not a series that I will mention is people really want me to play that Roblox TF2 game again. When did I play this? I think it was like 2020. Like it was, it was in the before times. And that video that I made like kind of blew up a little bit, I guess. And everyone wants me to come back to the game because apparently it's crazy different now. Maybe eventually. Oh my God. I see your comments. I will consider doing this at some point in the future if I can think of a way to make it into a good video. Until then, you can stop commenting now. I see them. I understand. <laughs> It is okay. I understand that it's been updated numerous times and that the problems that I have are no longer there. All right, I made the video like three years ago. You gotta settle down. Question that I got asked a lot number four was why I have the bird as the mascot. Uh, a lot of people see that and I guess it's a unique enough mascot that uh, it confuses a lot of people, especially because I clearly have a fondness toward the thing. If I ever hit one million subscribers, I will give the full story. However, for now, I will say that like, it's hard to explain, but like birds have become like a weird thematic thing throughout my life, I guess. And uh, it just felt natural to choose something like that as a mascot. And the reason that I chose the great blue heron, which is what the bird is, among other things, is because I think they're pretty cool looking and unique. And I don't know, they're just neat. All right. There were also a lot of variations of like, when and why did you start doing YouTube? And like, what's your, your super villain origin story? I don't know if there was ever a specific point where I'm like, yeah, I want to be a YouTuber. I think I just kind of eased into it. And in fact, if you look at my back catalog of videos and you scroll all the way back to the beginning, you might be surprised to find out that uh, my first ever video was uploaded in like 2015. Uh, I have a couple others that I think are unlisted now, but that's the one that I keep up because I personally find it amusing that I made that in Windows Movie Maker. Anyway, when I was in like, it would have been middle school or high school at that point, I just uploaded random videos that I made with friends or just moments that I found in servers that I thought were funny for the hell of it. I, there was wasn't really any reason other than I thought this was funny and hopefully the weirdos on the internet will too. And then in 2018, I think I had a bit more ambition with it. Uh, I decided that it would be a fun thing to try. And I actually was part of a different YouTube channel that I got invited to from like friends that I knew in real life who wanted to start one. And that one didn't go too far because we were trying to make Let's Plays in the year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 2018. Obviously, that did not go over very well, but uh, it was fun. And I decided that doing like those quick videos and like live commentaries and stuff would be a fun way to pass the time, especially as I was like about to leave high school and had nothing better to do, I guess. And then eventually I just started like slowly improving on the live commentaries that I was making. And then which video that I upload that like absolutely blew up? Oh yeah, no, it was uh, it was uh, the Raging Kitties of Higher Tower. Somehow it was the stupid Rage Kid videos both times that like kicked off my channel. But that one blew up. And then I think I went from like 1,000 subscribers to like 3,000. And I'm like, oh shit, I actually have to try now. People are actually looking at my videos. Whereas previously they were only getting like maybe 100 views on a good day. Now several were hitting into like the 1,000 range. And I'm like, okay, well now I have to try. So then I think I think that was the point where I actually started to like try with YouTube kind of, or at least I, I shifted from making videos that I thought would be fun to make in like five seconds to videos that I think people would actually want to watch. You can tell by looking at some of the older ones that it was a very slow process, but uh, eventually I did get there with some of my, my recent ones and yeah. So I guess to actually answer the question, I did it because I thought it was fun for a very long time and then eventually I actually got to a size where I realized it 
it would be beneficial for me to start trying and that if I, I could actually like try to make something out of it. And I, I did, I guess. And then the final question that I saw repeatedly throughout the document was uh, what the deal is with weapon reskins and like how that became a meme. So the backstory behind weapon reskins is that uh, my friend Zenith used to make these toxic shit posts about random YouTubers. They weren't anything super serious unless the YouTuber was like a complete creep, but uh, they were generally funny regardless. And he really wanted to make one for me, I guess, because I annoyed him. And obviously it was a joke. It's not like he was doing this as revenge. He just thought it would be funny and couldn't think of anything. So what he did is he took the first soundbite of the video that was listed as my channel trailer, which at the time was like, uh, what if reskins were different? And then he like found the video of like a great blue heron in a nature documentary. And then when it opened its mouth, he just played the audio. And that was the very first one. And it, it actually made me so upset because it was such a stupid video. It was like so dumb and meaningless. I'm like, really? That's the best you could come up with to roast me? And he thought it was really funny that I was getting mad about it. And I guess I kind of was, but... Uh, that was like how it started. And then it kind of became an in joke for a while until we started the chuckle nuts and what, whoever the editor was for one of the first podcasts, I think it actually was Zenith, uh, used it as like a sensor sound effect when one of us said something that probably shouldn't have been in the final cut. So he just played that over top of, uh, whatever they said. And it just became more of a running meme. And now somehow, I don't know how it spread, somehow is now this big TF2 meme. I hate it for the record. I think it's, I, I still do think it's dumb and meaningless. And uh, it's the exact type of meme that I despise where it's just repeating the same thing over and over that has no substance. But I've said my piece on it and I understand that it's not going to go away. So at this point, I've just kind of lied down and accepted it. Oh, and also if anyone's wondering why there's not TF2 playing in the background, uh, I figured it would be more appropriate to show a game that I personally like to play in the personal one. And then I'll play TF2 in the other one. I don't actually have a ton of accumulated footage. I've not been playing too much casual recently. Anyway, onto the actual specific questions. How did you meet the Chuckle Nuts? So the Chuckle Nuts backstory is that uh, I think it was in like August of 2021, I got an invite from someone that I'd never heard of before asking me if I wanted to do like a YouTuber collab for a no restriction sixes competitive team. The intent of the event was that it would just be like get six random YouTubers together who have never played competitive before, uh, have them try it out and then like see what their thoughts are because apparently according to this unknown individual competitive can actually be really fun if you try it and don't have to go up against a bunch of sweaties. The two people that invited me were Cyber Wizard and his friend Raw and the people he invited were myself, Space Guy in Line, Brickiest Brick, and uh, someone who isn't really in the Chuckle Nuts anymore called Inferno. Now like I said the intent was that we would like get together, practice like once the night before, do the event, and then disband because it's just a generic YouTuber collab type of thing, right? Uh, when we actually got together though the night before to like practice strategies and stuff because we wanted to do something stupid. I think it was like myself and Space Guy Online and Brickiest Brick and Cyber Wizard were like playing this game at Turbine. Almost immediately we realized that we just had insane chemistry and uh, we really enjoyed just playing random games. So after the event ended we had a lot of fun and we like kept the server the round that we made just as a temporary thing for recording. And uh, I think like a couple weeks later one of us had an idea for like a normal video collab. I think it was actually me. And uh, we got together, played some games, and then slowly but surely, we, we started to form more of a group. Now, this happened like nine months before the Chuckle Nuts channel was created. In the meantime, we slowly started inviting people from other servers that we thought were cool. Um, we, oh, who did we invite? I think it was like, the first one was Zenith, who was invited by Raw from Octo's server. Uh, then we invited El Maxo, who we knew from like, this weird community TF2 YouTuber server that it was owned by Whammo, weirdly enough. Uh, it was like one of the, the biggest ones at the time, so it wasn't as weird as it sounds. Uh, then we invited the notorious figure that we refer to as Shaq, who we had to kick out because he was a bit of a psycho, but that's a story for another day. Ushi came in somewhere along the way as one of Rawl's friends and eventually got promoted to Chuckle Nut when he wanted to join a bunch of stuff and we realized he was cool. And then right before we started the actual Chuckle Nuts channel, we invited the What Show because we none of us actually knew him, but we found him on some like Swedish server recording for his Pomsen video. And we were also recording for some dumb shenanigans video that we never actually uploaded. 
and uh, we like met him in the server and we asked him about the video because I think Zenith recognized him and uh, we looked at his channel and we're like, all right, he seems cool. Get him in here. And then later on, we invited Wheezy and Fishstick on a stick and uh, potentially a new member to a podcast and they stuck around for a while. So uh, those guys kind of joined in after the fact because we, again, we had him on a podcast and realized they were cool and wanted to do stuff with him afterward. The way we had the idea for the channel, The Chuckle Nuts, is that I think Zenith really wanted to do a podcast, and we realized that, like, yeah, it would be pretty fun. And originally, we were going to call it the Badlands Podcast, but then we realized, like, uh, oh, we should probably brand this as if we're going to do more than a podcast, because inevitably, we're going to want to do, like, group TF2 videos. We have a bunch of ideas for them, so it only makes sense. So then we, we came up with Chuckle Nuts somehow. Uh, I personally really like the name. I think Chuckle Nuts is, like, a fantastic group name for a TF2 group, but uh, I can't remember where it came from. Anyway, there's the entire Chuckle Dots lore. I promise you this would be a rambly video. Don't stare at me like I did something wrong. If I were to change one thing about my channel, examples, the type of content you upload, the way that you edit videos, etc., what would it be and why? Well, I feel like I could get some really meta answer here and say like, oh, I would change my personality to be way more interesting. But uh, if we're strictly talking about my channel, I mean, I feel like anything that I would want to change. Inevitably, I would have already, so it's kind of a hard question to answer. If you asked me six months ago, I probably would have said that I wanted to do, like, more content with friends and stuff, but I mean, I kind of have. I mean, that's, that seems to be the direction that I, I want to take things, at least in the near future, so... You know, I, I guess it's already working out. Is there a series idea that I would like to do, but have a feeling that it wouldn't do very well in terms of views? So there actually kind of is. There are two challenge video ideas that I've had for a while that I think would be really fun, and I also think would get like zero views had I ever tried them. The first of which is that I wanted to make a brand new TF2 account and buy the uh, Pyroland Contractor Pass and try to 100% it in a month. But like, that's such a specific speed run that again, I just feel like no one would actually care. And normally I wouldn't mind as much if no one would care, but this would also take like constant dedication for a month. And I really don't want to waste that amount of time on something that probably just won't do well. And then the other one is that I wanted to buy one of every strange weapon in the game and try to get it up to 100 kills within a month, which sounds really easy until you realize that like, not only are there like 140 weapons in the game, but some of them are the fan of war. So I would have to spend probably an entire day on just the fan of war, if not several. And then there are probably like numerous weapons like that when I only have 30 days. It's like, I don't know. Needless to say, it's a pretty convoluted video idea and it's just probably not worth the financial investment on top of the, uh, the time one as well. In terms of series, I considered doing like tier lists of each of the class's weapons, but based on how well designed I think they are. And then I realized like, wait a minute, there's some objective things that I can point to, but most of this is just my opinion. So why would anyone care? Where will the Chuckle Nuts channel go next? Uh, fantastic question. Hopefully it's in the direction of actually uploading videos. So Chuckle Nuts is weird because we've all kind of come to the agreement behind the scenes that none of us are really attempting to grow it in any way. We all have our own channels that we want to focus on more. And uh, because of that, the Chuckle Nuts channel, as it were, really only exists to like put out those fun video ideas that we want to do, but we none of us want to like commit to uploading on our own channel. Uh, like, like kind of the Minecraft one. It's like beating Minecraft super flat is a really basic video idea that's been done to death. But we know that if we put it on Chuckle Nuts, it's like, well, we don't have to care. If people want to watch it, they're obviously there for the Chuckle Nuts, and we don't have to worry about any kind of uh, metrics, and we just throw it out there and see what people think. That's what the Chuckle Nuts channel is for. So I hope we upload more. I mean, we've been trying to, but it's just hard to organize stuff. I think we have two videos uh, in the works right now, but um, I don't really think we have like these grand future plans for it because it's not the point. I mean, we all, again, we all have our own channels to, to have grand future plans for. This one's just for fun, and while I do want to be at least somewhat consistent with it. Uh, it's just kind of wherever the wind takes us. What was the hardest video to make on your channel? Probably the RTD tier list, although uh, depending on the day you ask me, that could really change between anything. The reason why the RTD tier list was so hard, and I think I even mentioned this in the video itself because I was so fed up with recording it at that point, 
that um, this video took like over a year and a half to actually like film or I guess not film, but like voice record. The reason is, is that I felt like I was cursed where every time I would sit down and try to record it, I would either like lose my train of thought or get inexplicably tired like a third of the way through. And uh, I did so many re-records in the first few months of me trying to do it that I eventually just got sick of the idea and uh, realized that like, oh shoot, I'm going to have to get so much more RTD footage to even do this. And I just threw it on the back burner. And then a year later, I even got a good audio take. And this was like uh, several, uh, it was like a month and a half before the actual good audio take that I got that was in the final video. And I realized that I had recorded the entire thing, but I did it through OBS for some reason, and my OBS wasn't configured properly, and the audio channel that it recorded on wasn't actually being recorded at all, so it was just completely silent. That pissed me off enough to not work on it for another month and a half. So that was probably the hardest one, and also then you consider that it was like an hour and a half video, and then I had to get footage of every single RTD effect, and also not only get footage of it, but experience those RTD effects enough to know what I'm talking about, and it's like, the amount of time that went into this is incalculable at this point. What do you think TF2 YouTube will be like in three to five years? That's really hard to say, because three to five years is actually quite a long time in the, uh, the scope of YouTube, because if you think about, like, what channels were popular three to five years ago, um, I can't think of any any popular, other than like Uncle Dane and Lazy Purple, other than the absolutely massive ones, I can't think of any like one to 300,000 subscriber YouTubers that were that popular three to five years ago that still upload now or vice versa. So I guess the cop-out answer is just to say that, uh, oh, I don't know, man, that's on a long time. Who knows? Uh, my hope is, though, that TF2 YouTube still exists in that amount of time. I could very easily see it kind of falling off in the same way that it did between, like, 2016 and 2019, where there just really aren't that many big channels. I won't name names, but there are at least a couple people that I personally know and a couple people that I've heard speculate of are going to be shifting away from TF2 in the near future. And I could very easily see that becoming a wider movement just because there isn't really much to make videos on anymore. Not because there aren't ideas, but because casual is in such an unplayable state that like, even if you wanted to, you really can't. But I could also just randomly see TF2 being infinitely more successful in five years because it's already happened. Like, if you told me that without updates, TF2 would be thriving five years later, well, okay, the community would be thriving anyway, the bots are obviously a problem, but uh, it's like, I would not have believed you, dude. I would have told you that you're stupid for assuming this game could last five more years, especially with the, the downturn that the game seemed to be experiencing when it still was getting updates around Jungle Inferno and Blue Moon. But if that's the case, I mean, yeah, obviously there's going to be probably a bunch more people, although I do think that the ideas in general for TF2 are running out. And even though the general tactic on YouTube is find a genre of video that's being done and is popular in some other community and see if you can apply your own spin on it for your own game. I don't know. I, I don't know how long that can realistically apply to TF2 without working casual or populated community servers. I feel like eventually you're going to hit a wall. Is the heron your first Sona or just a mascot? Does it have a name other than Great Blue? Okay, I've argued this with like every single person under the sun. Apparently, the, the thing that I've been told is that if you really want to argue semantics, any animal mascot ever could be a fursona because the only real definition is that it's like a kind of humanoid animal that is supposed to represent you in some way. Obviously, that's stupid reasoning because then you could say that baseball teams have fursonas and that's not real. But depending on the definition, if you really want to get into the weeds about it, like, yeah, I guess I guess it is the fursona if you're going to use the, the mega liberal definition of what counts. Personally, I don't consider it to be. I think it's just the channel mascot, even if it uh, does look suspiciously furry if some people have pointed out and no it doesn't have a name it's just I, I call it blue because it's the second half of great blue and I'm not a very creative person but it's never really been given an official name outside of that do I plan to do videos with friends more often or continuing with discussion videos about what if this was different or whatever honestly I think a perfect split down the middle is about where I can see things taking in the future uh, the what if videos or at least the way that I want to do them do have a bit more commitment involved in them uh, to the point where it's not like I can just 
post one every few weeks like I used to. It's like, yeah, I actually want to like have a plug in, draft it up and uh, actually test them and then see what actually happens and do all that junk. So again, there is just a little bit more involvement in those compared to the ones that I do with friends, which are a lot quicker and arguably more enjoyable depending on the video. But at the same time, I like how both of them turn out and uh, I do want to continue doing both. So I don't really think I have to choose one or another. I think I'm in a pretty good spot uh, flip-flopping back and forth as it is. Would you be willing to revisit some of your older what-ifs and implement them into a server like the Headshots vid? Yes, stay tuned. What other map ideas do you have planned for future videos? The only immediate idea that I have that's not just making a brand new map from scratch is that I want to go back through a lot of the maps that I made in like middle school and high school, which weren't very good because I just didn't really pay attention to game design back then. Uh, actually like polish them up to the point they're playable and run them on a server and just see what happens, see how bad the maps actually are. And then when they inevitably are chaotic, I want to like try to fix them up to make them actually playable and see if I can do that with my modern experience. And I think that would be pretty fun. However, I do have a couple ideas for maps in the future. One is going to be a big old skyscraper where it's like a single, I guess, attack, defend, capture the flag, you could call it. And uh, there's going to be cameras. I don't know. It's hard to explain map ideas without just showing them to you. But I do have a few that I may do eventually. We'll, uh, we'll see. And then in a similar vein, are you ever going to finish the Emesis Blue map? Okay, to be honest with you, probably not. The reason is that number one, in terms of the visuals, the map is pretty much all the way there. It was really just for me an experiment of like, how closely could I recreate Emesis Blue into something that is technically considered playable while still maintaining all the atmosphere. That was the challenge for me and that was I think the fun of the video. The issue is the two fort sucks ass as a capture the flag, or well, okay, it sucks as a capture the flag map too, but whatever weird attack defend variant game mode I installed on is just not very fun because two fort was not a very well designed map. And because of that, there's a very finite amount of ways that I can make the gameplay bearable. I think we did like three testing play sessions with the Chuckle Nuts, and every single one was so unfathomably defender biased that it wasn't even funny. And it's like, even if I implement all of the custom V script to make the uh, the weapons similar to what they were in Emesis Blue, it's like, it's not going to matter. It's going to be the same amount of unplayable, if not worse, because now you don't even have like certain counters to stuff. So I may put the map out there at some point if I get permissions from Fortress Films to include all the assets with that. But as it is, it's like I don't really have any plans to continue that just because I can't foresee a way to maintain the actual aesthetic while keeping it fun to play. That being said, I wouldn't be opposed to releasing the decompiled map file either if someone wanted to try to finish it and polish it up for me, but uh, I personally I just don't have much interest after <laughs> seeing how certain playtests went. How did you get your fursuit, the complete story behind it? Okay, so some of you probably just recoiled upon hearing that I have a fursuit. There, there is a backstory and it's not my fault, I promise. So the the story goes that in January of last year, a former friend of the Chuckle Nuts was joking around and started a GoFundMe to get me a fursuit. Now, the GoFundMe was entirely created just as a one-off joke where it's just some shock thing you send your friends and it's like, dude, what the hell? You just made this like a real thing. Yeah, that, that was the intent of the joke. However, some goobers on the Chuckle Nuts server thought it would be funny to actually start putting money into it. And it got like 20 bucks. And uh, he, the guy was joking, the guy who made it was joking about how it's eventually going to be fully funded. So I made a bet with him. I said, all right, I don't want this lingering on the internet forever. So I'll bet with you right now. If it hits 500 bucks within the first week and you're not allowed to promote it anywhere outside of the server, then I will match that donation and you can keep it up for as long as you want. If it doesn't, you have to delete it because he was intent on just leaving it up forever until it got funded. The Mad Lads on the Chuckle Nuts server actually funded it. And while I think the share that I had to personally contribute didn't quite end up being 500, I think it was like a, a little bit less because I promised just to match whatever people put in. Uh, it was still pretty close. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I learned my lesson about uh, challenging the dark forces of random bored people on the internet. So then over the course of the next like six months or so, the money did slowly trickle in again, despite me never promoting it. I was kind of hoping people would forget it, <laughs> because eventually you could just refund it if it's inactive for too long. But uh, people, you no, know, people were dedicated. They, they really wanted that to happen. And uh, I think in around, was it like July or August that ended up getting fully funded and I was forced to eat my words. And you know what? I'm impressed. 
Um, and then through a friend of mine that knows a lot about fursuits, we ended up finding a smaller creator on Twitter. Hi, Skybreel, if you're watching, by the way. And uh, that was how that came to be. I, I'm not going to say that I'm proud of it, all right? But uh, I do own this as a trophy. I view this more as like a, a pelt almost, like something you'd hang on your wall above the fireplace more so than something I'm being actively encouraged to wear on a daily basis. That's how I cope, I guess. And then to respond to the inevitable question, which I don't have on hand, but I know has been asked several times because I remember it, uh, when's the fursuit stream going to be? Because I did promise to do a live stream with a camera once I got the thing, and that was like six months ago. I'm still kind of figuring out the logistics, and I also need to get a webcam. The problem is that wearing a fursuit for like three hours for a stream sounds unbearable, and I also really don't want a fursuit stream to get recommended to people who just subscribed to my channel. That's a way to like have my subscriber count instantaneously, so I'm debating about when and if and how I want to do it, I will do it eventually for sure because, again, people did pay for it. But uh, there are some things that I got to figure out beforehand and work through the logistics on. So uh, it'll happen, all right? Be patient and uh, eventually things will come together. What TF tubers do you watch other than members of the Chuckle Nuts group? I don't actually watch a ton of other TF2 YouTubers. Occasionally I'll watch like an interesting video if I see it come across my feed. But the only person that I think I watch on a regular basis is shown because I, he just does like a similar style of videos to what I personally like to watch and I guess what I personally do by extension. And uh, I like a lot of the experiments that he runs. I think they're fascinating. Conversely, I've commented a lot of times in Shonik's stream chat and I don't think he likes me very much anymore. <laughs> Because Shodak is a very, he seems to be a very, like, focused, serious person, and I'll comment usually something pretty shitposty, and he'll be in the middle of doing this, like, rigorous scientific experiment, and he'll just respond in a very flat affect, like, we're actually doing an experiment, this isn't the time for jokes, and I'm like, okay. I'm sorry for trying, man. What's the relationship between you and the other members of the Chuckle Nuts group? Do you know each other IRL and are you friends behind the scenes? So yes, we are all actually pretty good friends behind the scenes. I would say more so than your average YouTube group. At this point, I think we're all just like random internet friends who happen to share a hobby more so than like YouTube collaborator people. We technically do know each other IRL in the sense that we did meet up uh, last March and I think we're about to meet up again, actually. But it's not like we met each other in real life originally. That's just something we happen to schedule so he go see the uh, voice actors at PAX last year. What's your favorite aspect of being a content creator? And if you could be better at one thing or if we as the viewers could be better at one thing, what would it be? I think if there's one thing that as a creator I could be better at would just be work ethic probably. I have a very low tolerance for sitting down and editing. I get tired of doing it after like an hour. And at this point I've learned to like bounce back and forth between topics, but it, I just cannot focus on editing. <laughs> it's, so, it's so grueling, especially during certain parts of it. So I, I wish I was better about just like sitting down and actually doing things. Minus that though, I wish I was able to have a bit stronger of a personality solo. I think right now uh, I rely on someone to bounce off of very heavily. And even then, I, I, I just personally feel like the stuff that I'm adding to those sorts of interactions is not as much as someone else would. And I, I'm basically only there as like, a, a way to, to let the other person shine. Whether that's true or not, who knows? I, I'm not going to be the one to say that I know everything about a topic that I'd obviously be very biased about, but uh, that that's the other thing I think I would change outside of like the, the more meta uh, aspects. My favorite aspect of being a content creator, though, is that I get to do something that I'm genuinely interested about, and I also get to be my own boss about it. Believe it or not, I do actually find the topics that I talk about on YouTube very interesting. I, I'm, I, I will not deny the nerd allegations, dude. I, I nerd out about completely random and specific things, but um, they're interesting. I mean, it, it's fun to break down those sorts of things into a much deeper light than most people ever would, and I think being able to do that and have Having other people actually be interested in that and YouTube actually acknowledging that other people are interested in that is really cool. And uh, the fact that I'm able to not only do this and share it with other people, but also make a living at the same time and do it as my full time job is really nice. What's the video that I'm most proud of? This is a fantastic question that I have no answer to. Every single video I only view for its flaws. That's OK. Hold on. That sounds like way too doomer of a take. OK, what I meant to say there is that it's very very easy to focus on the flaws of the video, and because of that, 
I really only see the imperfections rather than the videos. Um, I don't know if there's any videos that like, if I was showing some of my YouTube channel for the first time, I'd point them to. Um, but I think to an extent, most of my recent ones I'm proud of, but like none specifically, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer, man. Okay. This one's like three different questions. What was your biggest inspiration? How did you learn video editing and how did you motivate yourself to do work every day when starting out? First of all, I'm going to tell you that I set this up in such a way where if you had two questions, you could just submit them in different forms. You don't have to do that. As far as the question goes of my biggest inspiration, um, that's a, actually a hard one. I don't think there's like this single content creator that I want to try to emulate and look up to. But conversely, I, there are a lot of like smaller aspects of content creators that I do watch that I, I try to keep and uh, like base certain things off of if I think it's done well and I think it meshes with my like personality. But there isn't anyone that I could definitively say is my biggest inspiration. I, I think I, I take inspiration from creators in a much different way than that, I guess. The way that I learned video editing was, I mean, mostly self-taught. Like I mentioned a while ago, uh, I started doing YouTube videos it was back in like 2015 and I started out on Windows Movie Maker like a real chat and eventually I moved to some like um, allegedly cracked version of Vegas. Who knows if I paid for that or not? You know, I can't really remember. But Vegas Pro, for all of its flaws, was significantly better than most other things on the market in 2015 and uh, I just slowly learned new things as I went and then Recently, I switched over to Premiere, which is infinitely better. Side note, if you're an aspiring editor, get Premiere or something that's not Vegas. Vegas is horrible. I don't know why I even put up with that program for more than a year. But yeah, it's mostly just self-taught. I mean, you can find pretty good tutorials on YouTube and uh, eventually you get the hang of what's typically in a video editor. And uh, like once you learn one video editor, you're going to find similar tools in all of them. So it's not too hard to switch back and forth if you want to. How did you motivate yourself to start doing work every day when starting out? Okay, so this is some more channel lore. When I was doing YouTube, like before I was quote unquote trying, for some reason, I had an ungodly work ethic toward getting those stupid unscripted live commentary videos out every single week. But I think the reason I was that persistent so early on is just because I, I wanted to put things out there for people to watch, regardless of how bad they were. I just wanted to entertain people. I just thought it would be fun for, for people to laugh along or whatever. And nowadays, obviously, there's a little bit more of a financial incentive as this is a job, but uh, it's just like breaking down all of the, the cool topics and like thinking about something brand new and being able to dissect it in my head or coming up with some like really cool map or mini game idea. Those are all fun. I, I just like doing those for the sake of doing them. So the motivation comes from it's fun and also I need to pay rent, I guess, to, to give you the short answer. How or why have I not gotten bored of making TF2 content? I have. I've just masked it very well. If you look through my back catalog, when was the last time I actually played casual for a video? Minus Halloween mode, it was a couple times in September to make the fixing soldier weapons video. And then a couple times, I think in July, although I feel like most of the footage in that video, I just already had as a backlog. And then a couple times in April. The point being that I very rarely played normal TF2, quote unquote, in the past, like, year and a half just because I've gotten so burnt out on casual. Casual to me is just not something I can really stomach in more than small doses anymore. Even beyond the obvious bot problem, I think there's just a lot of like frustrating mechanics and balancing issues that you get tired of after a while. That's a video for another day though. For now, I will say that I, I have gotten bored of making specific TF2 videos and the way that I entertain myself is to mix it up. I do things like, hey, why do I have to play casual? I, I have enough of a fan base now where if I ran a server running a stupid plugin, like what if weapons could headshot, I can invite people on and actually test these ideas for real. Or I have all of these friends that are willing to play like TF2 with me and I have map making knowledge. Why would I bother playing casual when I can make my own casual with blackjack and hookers? I have gotten bored of TF2 in a sense, but TF2 as an engine, so to speak, is so broad and diverse that I'm able to entertain myself by making stupid things, basically, which is how I entertain myself in most games. I, I just like doing that sort of thing in most games that I play. How far did you expect your channel to go when you first started uploading? Like, not far at all. Uh, I mentioned a couple times that I uploaded videos with no quality control or real expectations 
stations behind them just for the hell of it because I had nothing better to do and it was pretty fun. When I was doing those, I really didn't expect anyone to subscribe. I even kind of had it in the back of my head like, who's watching this? What, what sort of person do you think it takes to sit down and watch a, a no view video and like think it's good? Probably none. And then the bigger I got, I think the bigger my expectations got, but I, I think they've scaled pretty linearly. Like even right now, I don't have the, the delusions that I'm going to hit a million subscribers next year. It's like, yeah, I'm probably going to grow at a pretty steady pace and eventually I'll hit the glass ceiling on TF2 and I'll maybe expand outward, but it's like, I don't know. I, I never really have any expectations for how far my channel is going to get. I just kind of take stuff as it comes and make the most of it. What is your process for thumbnails? Eventually I'll make a guide uh, breaking down how I do some of my thumbnail stuff, but I may not do that actually. It's very rare that I just flat out refuse to be transparent with something because I, I like talking about j the uh, the production stuff because I think it's just interesting to, to share and also interesting to like teach people about and get them started in. That being said, my thumbnails right now work because they stand out for most of the other stuff that's in the TF2 sphere, which is mostly SFM stuff. In fact, the reason why I started doing my thumbnails in the style that I do them, on top of me not being able to use SFM because it's hard, was mainly because I saw all of the content that was being made at like a certain point, like 2020, and I realized that, hey, all of this is just SFM posters. It would be very easy for me to make something in a lot more of a graphical style and have it stand out than it would be to like try to outdo everyone else's SFM. FM posters and I don't know, hire some really expensive dude because I think that's what the meta was at the time. And for the most part, it worked. And I think my thumbnails right now have a very specific style that's really only associated with me. That being said, if I taught everyone how to do it, I think they would lose their charm very quickly. And I, the last thing that I'd really want is for my specific thumbnail style to become overused. So I I will show people the basics. I would do want to make a tutorial video eventually, but uh, at the same time, it's like, you know, it, it, you got to acknowledge that at some point it may not be in your best interest to like publicly reveal all your secrets. I will say at least though that uh, it's a lot simpler than you'd think. Most of the process is just like having a good eye for composition and trying a bunch of stuff. And uh, the way that I get my models is off of like loadout.tf. And the way that I get all my like cool filters is just by spamming filters in Photoshop. It's a little bit more nuanced than that, but that's the gist of it. What got you hooked on TF2 in the first place? So I had a friend in middle school named Henry who was really in the TF2 at the time. I had never played the game before, and I don't even think I had a computer powerful enough to run it, but he was very insistent that I give the game a try. So eventually, I think my parents like bought me a new laptop for school, and uh, I installed it, and really it was just on the recommendation of him. I will say, though, the funniest story that I have with that is that uh, he had been playing for a while and was like starting to find community modes when I was just starting the game. So one of the first games of TF2 I ever played outside of like the tutorial mode that it gives you was him inviting me to a full crits CP orange TF2 times 10 server with Halloween pumpkins and skeletons. And I never played TF2 before really, so I thought that's just what the game was. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. I'm like, oh my god, this game is insane because like you you go spy and your knife swings really fast, and then you you have to dodge these like million mile an hour rockets, and you like I don't know everything is just ramped up to a billion. And uh, again, I had no context for what the game was, and I'm like, oh, this game is kind of insane, but I, I, I guess I can understand why you find it fun. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, this is like a crazy server. And then he invited me like two for it or something, and it was normal, but. I, I, I genuinely, for probably like three days, just had that impression in my mind and thought that's what the game was. Do you enjoy recording and editing faster paced videos like the math vids or the longer marathons like your hide and seek series? I think I prefer recording for the hide and seek videos a lot more just because it's really just having fun and playing games with friends and there's no way you can go wrong there, really. Uh, in terms of editing, I probably, actually, I probably still like the hide and seek ones more because, I don't know, it's very easy to turn your brain off when you're just like chopping up clips and like uh, making sure everything's flowing correctly. Like once you get a pretty good intuition, you don't have to think about it too hard. Uh, but when you're doing the more intricate videos, like the uh, the maths ones, as you call it, it's a lot more involved and you can't really turn your brain off in the same way. You have to focus on something that's at its core pretty tedious. So I think I prefer the longer ones, uh, at least the ones that are like done live with friends. But uh, I don't 
mind either. If I didn't like editing, if I genuinely hated it, I would not be doing YouTube as consistently as I am. Does your family know you do YouTube or do you keep it a secret from them? Well, I think my parents would get really suspicious if they saw me living in an apartment and the money coming from presumably nowhere. So like, yeah, I mean, people do know. They, they know that I do YouTube, but it's not like I share all the intricate details of what I do with them. And it's also really funny because most people that I know in real life that uh, know I do YouTube for a living don't have any idea or conception of where the money comes from. And they're like, oh, you like make video game videos on the internet and then they just pay you. And it's like, no, mom, it's the advertisers. It's not like some random guy in a basement sending me money. It's like there these are advertising corporations that pay Google and there's an entire auction service. And, and I don't know, dude, it's very late right now. I'm sorry. Have you ever thought about how much of an influence you are to some future TF2 content creators? Okay, so this is a conversation I've had with people actually not too long ago where it's really weird to think like, because we, we think back on Jerma and Star, right? And we're like, wow, these guys are these living legends and these inspired my videos so much. And Jerma and Star barely even feel real because they're like larger than life figures now. But who knows, in 10 years, I mean, we could be the ancient YouTubers that the then current creators look back on and say, man, those guys are inspired. Those guys are my childhood, which is really weird to think about. But yeah, it has occurred to me before. It's just one of those like weird existential things you got to think about at some point, I guess. Has doing YouTube changed the way you interact with normal people? To a degree, actually, probably yes. Uh, I think in general, it's made me a lot more confident in just like talking about random stuff for long periods of time. <laughs> Uh, especially like looking back on videos I made not even too long ago, your speaking voice, especially when you're speaking into a microphone toward nothing in particular, improves very quickly because, I mean, you basically have to. You're, you're talking to yourself with the hopes that people are going to watch it. It's kind of sad if you think about it. But like being able to talk about things in an informative way, but also to stay entertaining while doing so and keeping people's attention, I think is actually a genuine skill that YouTube improves. And uh, I think certain like, what, what even was it? Like speech classes in college that I did, I noticed were a breeze after I started doing YouTube. And I was still pretty early on at that point. And I think I've improved a bit since then, too. So it's just that I think that's the, been the biggest thing, uh, not even just talking to people, but just talking about things to people. What is the worst type of TF2 content in your opinion? Oh, this is a spicy take, and I'm immediately going to burn bridges by saying this. The ones that I personally can't stand are the, the videos where it's like the eight minute and one second clip dumps, where it's like really spastic ADHD editing, and the jokes half the time are just ragdoll funny. And then you look at the thumbnail and it's someone like zoomed in standing there. And then there's like zoomed in text at the top saying something wacky. It's like, okay, dude, everyone can make this in five seconds. If you make a good variation of this, I think Yup Cup does this really well. So that's like the one creator that I actually watch those from. But uh, most of the time they are, as I've seen it described in hilariously accurate detail, uh, Coco Melon for people with less than 500 hours in Team Fortress 2. And frankly, I just, I, I cannot stand the way they're presented. I promise no hate toward anyone who makes them, but consider making other types of content kindly. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't even notice this earlier. I was like scrolling through uh, comments and someone said IE and then wrote out what it actually means or like what it translates to id est and then defined it. Like, dude, this is a Q&A for a gaming YouTuber. You do not have to try to impress me that hard. How long does it generally take to make a video? Any amount of time ever. It depends on the video. Like, seriously, it's been anywhere between, I think, a few days at the shortest to a few months at the longest. It just depends on what it is. And considering I go by the ideas that I'm most excited about rather than trying to maintain too strict of an upload schedule, I mean, it's, it's just the dice roll, really. Favorite musical artist? Uh, oh, that one's hard. It would probably be a tie between Electric Light Orchestra and REO Speedwagon. I'm a huge sucker for classic rock. And uh, those two specific bands really scratch the itch of uh, what I like in music. Why do YouTubers have several accounts? This is, I'm guessing, in reference to the fact that most YouTubers have like at least one side channel they occasionally upload stuff to. Uh, for instance, I have this one, but I also have Blue's Nest. The reason is that YouTube penalizes you, kind of, when videos don't do super well. Um, it's not like one bad video is going to, to knock away your entire channel's growth, but at the same time, if you have a lot of videos in a row that are underperformers, quote-unquote, YouTube will assume that that's just the sort 
sort of thing that you upload and won't recommend it as much. So most of the time what people will do is they'll create a second channel to put stuff like uh, Q&As or announcements or just random stuff that isn't related to the main type of content they make so they don't have to worry about the impact on metrics. Other than that though, I mean, I know some people get upset that YouTubers have multiple channels as a trend, but in my opinion, it's really good because that way you don't have to be spammed by a bunch of random announcements and stuff from YouTubers that you just want to watch the content of. Where do you find your ideas? Most of the time when I come up with ideas, it's when I'm either doing something very menial. Uh, for instance, that could be like uh, uh, taking a shower or uh, like mowing the yard or doing housework or even just driving. It's like those times where my mind is just allowed to run are the times where I'll usually come up with some sort of weird idea. For instance, my what if every class had jumper weapons video was an idea that I thought of when I was sitting in the airport uh, coming back from PAX East last year. And uh, I had like a really long layover, so I just randomly thought about like, you know, what if uh, what if there were other types of jumper weapons? I don't even know how I thought of it. It just kind of popped into my mind because I was bored. And then I spent like several hours in some random airport cafe, like uh, writing it all down on my laptop. But it's usually just stuff like that where I'll have the idea. And then as soon as I get a chance, I'll just write it down as much as I can about it. And then eventually, probably in like several weeks later, come back to it. The other time that I'll think about ideas a lot is when I'm working on other completely unrelated videos. This doesn't happen as much recently, but I know in the past, a lot of the ideas that I had for videos were almost accidental, where I didn't intend on doing them. I was like working on something else, and uh, that inspired a brand new idea that uh, that was unrelated. The most memorable instance of that happening that I can remember was when I was working on a video that I never ended up making, where I went and rebalanced all of TF2 times 10s weapons because I like was just kind of getting tired of the mode and I was in the middle of the tier list and whatnot. And as I was like compiling all of the stats to suggest rebalances for, I realized that a lot of the reskins had different stats than like the normal versions of the weapon, and that was like a trend that they did. So when I was suggesting rebalances, I was thinking like, all right, instead of just some reskins being different, let's just make all of them different and call it a day. And then I realized like, hey, wait a minute, why stick to TF2 times 10? What if normal TF2 is like this? That would make so much more interesting of a concept. So then I did that. But that was like, that came from a video that I never made about TF2 times 10, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then I think like random other ones where I uh, like went through a lot of historical changes in TF2 mainly came from me like just scrolling through tons of wiki pages back to back and uh, seeing random trends within them. So I don't know. Usually the ideas are incidental. I don't like brainstorm. I don't sit down and brainstorm much. But yeah, sometimes I'll be inspired by like other random videos that I see on YouTube and I'll think about like how can I port this into TF2 and make it interesting. But most of the time it's not intentional. I feel like there's an interesting story of how I came up with like each individual idea more so than a collective thing. But uh, that's, yeah, it, it's a very chaotic process. I'm not someone who can just sit down and, like, think about things manually and just come up with good thoughts. When did you realize you made it as a TF tuber? So this feels like a question that I wouldn't have a great answer to, where it's like, oh, just kind of eased into it, you know? But there actually was one encounter that I had with some random person on a server that made me think, like, dang, Stuff is not how it used to be in terms of like my my place within the community. Uh, I used to go on community servers a lot. Like I, that was like the main source of TF2 for me back in the day, like back in uh, middle and high school. And I'd go on those for like hours and hours after school each day. And uh, I was so used to just being a random person who maybe was a server regular, but just for the most part was uh, someone who could drop in and play the game and then drop out, not have to worry about it. There was a point where I started becoming a larger TF2 figure when I was in college, and I went on a random community server just for old time's sake, and I had people actually recognize me under my main alias. There was like three people, and they, they were all like, wow, I can't believe it's actually you. I never thought I would meet anyone famous. I'm like, dude, I'm just a random guy. Nothing, nothing about me has changed since I've started making these videos. And uh, I don't know, that kind of hit me like, man, I can't believe I actually have become that recognizable of a, a TF2 figure. How long were you on YouTube before you found your video style? Um, I would say technically and definitely because I feel like I've not really found my definitive style yet. There have been certain styles of videos that I've stuck with for quite a while, but there's not one that I can confidently say is going to be the definitive future of my channel. Um, even the ones like my what if videos, it's like, yeah, I want to do those for as much as I can, but 
Um, I don't know. I think eventually I'll shift away from those, even if it's not super soon. In the future, I could very well become known for a different style of video than anything that I'm doing now. I like to mix stuff up a lot just to try it to see what's fun, to see what people are interested in. But um, in terms of what I'm known for now, I probably did YouTube for like uh, three years. Is that right? I became known for my weapon generators in 2021, but I don't think people know me for that anymore. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's encouragement to anyone that's just starting out. I uploaded videos for three years straight without having any confident idea of what I wanted to be really. And, uh, you know, it eventually did work out just with some persistence. So if it's not working out now, if you've been uploading for a year and you're frustrated about not having progress, hey, it, it can take a while, but eventually if you keep at it, it will turn up. And then the final question that I will go into any depth about in this video is face reveal. Probably not. Uh, I don't really see any need to do it. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I, I would feel so weird having people actually look at me as I play a game. I, I just don't like that concept at all. Maybe at some point I will, but I, I look like a, a standard dude. All right. You don't got to speculate about it too much. And last but not least, before we go, let's rapid fire basic questions. What's your favorite Overwatch character? Farah and Ash, but I don't really play Overwatch anymore. So those are just the two that I enjoyed when I did play. Favorite SpongeBob episode? I could be basic and say band geeks because i mean that's objectively the best episode but i'll say that my favorite underrated one is the art school episode what's your second favorite bird uh probably blue jays and crows that entire family of bird is so smart it's fascinating if you ended up in a blind date with any of the tf2 characters who would you want it to be well uh there's exactly one woman character in the entire thing so probably miss pauling what do you major in well i'm not in school anymore but when i was it was front end web design are there any birds that you'd consider to be underappreciated uh easily pigeons. Pigeons, on top of being a very clean animal who just happen to live in a dirty environment, are surprisingly smart and are one of the only domesticated birds ever. They are amazing, and I, people just assume they're rats because the city slickers just don't get it. Is there any music that you would listen to that would surprise some people? Uh, classic rock? I don't know if that would surprise people, but... I feel like it might surprise a couple who think that I'm like a hardcore heavy metal fan. I don't know. I don't know what stereotype people have with me, dude. Favorite PVZ plant? Uh, probably the starfruit. I like spamming starfruits as an easy way to clear all the levels. It's really fun. What's your favorite branch of math? Uh, conceptually calculus. I think some of the like proofs for that are absolutely fascinating when you consider like how we found out how some of that stuff works and how it relates to real life phenomenon. In terms of actually doing the math, I, I just really can't stand doing equations. It's just my numbing to me. I need something to actually look at, uh, so probably none of them. So those are a small sample of questions that I wanted to answer either relating to myself or my YouTube channel. There were a ton. Thank you for everyone who submitted some. Uh, I'll do another video at some point relating to all of my TF2 related questions because, like I said, I think those are also interesting to go into in great detail. And uh, for now, that's going to be it. Hold on a second. There's another question up here. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to answer this one. Okay, so I should probably, probably finally address the allegations and answer this big question that I got asked a ton. Are you a furry? I know a ton of people have been wondering this for years. There's been a ton of speculation, especially just with the bird looking slightly furry-like. And uh, I, I do finally want to give a, a final answer to this question. Because I, th I think it's important to like connect with your audience like that. I think being transparent and uh, letting everyone know exactly what is what is uh, is good. And uh, even though, you know, I don't want to get like too close. I think there there's some sort of like uh, social separation that's necessary. You don't want parasocial relationships to form because, you know, those are a pretty big problem. And uh, obviously I do want to avoid that. And uh, although I don't know, I do want to seem like a more grounded, down to earth individual, even without the parasocial relationships. And, you know, there's always just a, a difficult way to, to, to parse between those. Anyway, as far as the question goes, to, to finally answer whether or not I am a furry, because this has been a, a pretty big question for a while now, and I really hope the answer that I give doesn't offend anyone or doesn't make anyone think more or less of me. This is just how it is. All right, you don't you don't need to to think so either way. I know people have very controversial opinions about furries in general, and it's a very hot topic. But you know, I figured I should at least give my way in. And despite probably not being super beneficial, I mean, I think it is worth uh, talking about. So anyway, to answer the question of whether I am or am not a furry, I will say that.